Hello friends and welcome to part four of our fast API tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover uh, request body, uh, which is what you send when you're uh, submitting something like a post request or a patch or a put or something like that. So let's go to the coding screen. Um, I have, uh, there are a couple of changes. Um, first, I wanted to add a high contrast. Um, I know uh, there might be uh, some people watching who might have uh, certain issues with, with vision, you know, color blindness, that sort of thing. So I wanted to, to make it a little bit more accessible. So I apologize if you had a little trouble watching it in the first three videos. From here on out, if it's not this high contrast theme, I'll find another one. Um, and I've also added in a, um, a run configuration in PyCharm. So I don't need to actually open up the terminal. I can just go up here, hit play, and it will open up at localhost 8000. So with that out of the way, let's talk about uh, request body. So like I said before, this is the sort of thing that we're going to do if we want to send a post request or, or a put or a patch or something like that. So you can see here, we have a post request to our, our base route. There's nothing that we're actually sending here. I'm not gonna use this one, I'm just gonna leave it for now. But let's do, let's submit a, or create a post request, app.post items. And then we will declare this, this uh, method, async def create item, return item. Now, oh no, I don't want that. I just want item. Now, what we need to do is we need to somehow figure out how to pass in this information. And the way we do this is not via a path parameter. It is not via a query string. Remember, path parameter shows up in the URL declaration up here. The query string is a, uh, a primitive type that is not already declared up in the URL parameters. So the way we would do that is we use Pydantic. So what we can do is we can declare a class um, item and we will inherit from base model. And before we go do anything else, we need to import it from Pydantic import base model. There we go. Now we're going to declare this. This is you can think of this almost as a a dictionary. It's you know it's a class. It's an object. You're going to declare your attributes of this class. So we'll say name is going to be a string. We're going to say description is going to be a string. We're going to say price is a float, and tax is a float. So this is the idea. So you know it's something that let's say you've got a shop and you're selling something on your shop. Now, one extra thing that we're going to uh, that we're going to include in here is we're going to make the description optional, and tax is going to be optional. Now, there are two ways that you can do this. One is if you're using something between 3.6 and 3.10 for Python, and what you would do here is you would just declare optional equals none, and again we would have to import from typing import optional. The other way you can do it using uh, Python 3.10 or above is float or none equals none. So this setup right here um, will not work if you're using below Python 3.10. Um, since I'm using Python 3.10, I'm gonna include that here. String or none equals none, and I will get rid of this. Okay, now, the next thing we need to do is we need to pass it in. So you can see here, we've already declared this as the item. Now, if we were to pass in item as a string, it would just return the item. So if we hit refresh, you can see create item, try it out, hello. This looks exactly like what we had before when we were passing in a query string. That's because we're declaring this as a, a primitive type string, float, int, boolean, something like that. We can use this pydantic base model extension of item, and that will tell FastAPI, hey, this is actually supposed to be a part of the request body. I don't want this to be a query parameter. I don't want this to be a path parameter. 
I want this to actually be part of my request body that I'm sending as a post request. So now if we go in here and we notice this will refresh, we refresh the page and now look at this. The, uh, the query line, the input that was up here is now gone. And now we have a just a generic JSON object that we can go ahead and we can, I mean, it gives us options right here. We can pass this in and we get this response body. Execute, let's execute again. Um, the nice thing about this is because we've declared the description and the tax optional, we can get rid of it. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things. And I, I, there's something that I wanna show you. So this is not gonna work. Um, a lot of people might not know why. And this is gonna be a weird situation that we're gonna get. You're gonna see here, expecting property name and close in double quotes. This doesn't really tell us much of anything. Um, anytime you're submitting uh, JSON, this is invalid JSON because we have a trailing comma. So this is, this is gonna be no good. Now we hit execute and we get the response body that we're expecting. Let's get rid of the price though. Again, we have to get rid of the trailing comma and let's see what happens. Here you can see we got that 422 again. That's kind of um, fast API's kind of default. Anytime something doesn't work that you're not handling for, um, it's gonna return a 422 for you. Um, so you can see here, there's a field required and it shows the location is in the body and the field that is required is the price. So now if we add back in price, one, two, three, we'll add in description. This is a simple description. Simple name and tax, I don't know, $3. No, that doesn't seem right. Let's make it 750. You know, I don't know. Seven, I don't know what 7% of 123 is. I know it's probably more than 750, but you know, whatever. Now we can actually hit execute and we will get this response back as we anticipate. Okay, so now let's look to see what we can do with this. We're not gonna be just returning the item. Uh, we wanna actually do something with this. By the way, I'm gonna add in an extra little caveat here. If you're really into typing everything, um, you can add in this. Uh, this is gonna return the item from this. So if you return hello, then it will yell at you because you're not actually returning the type item, but that's just a, a side effect. We're not gonna worry about that right now. So now let's look at um, doing something with the actual item. So we're gonna say item dictionary equals item.dict. This is a, a method that comes built in through Pydantic. Anything that has a base model, you can, you can call the dict method on it and it will convert it into a dictionary. Okay, so now we have if item.tax, and we use this, this dot notation instead of if you were to, if, this, if item itself were a dictionary, we would have to do something like this, or more accurately, or not accurately, but, but better, we would have to do dot get tax. But we don't have a dictionary. We have, this is an actual class. So we're getting an attribute of the class. So now we're gonna say price with tax equals item dot price plus item dot tax. And then we can just say item dict update. We're gonna update price with tax is price with tax. Let's say we wanna actually show, hey, you've passed in this item, here's the price, here's the tax, here's the total price, including tax. And now we're going to return item dict. So this is also why sometimes, so there's a reason we're returning the item dict and here's what's gonna happen. And that's why I didn't leave it in there. This is now a dictionary. We've, by declaring this, this is set as a an item with strings for keys and any type for a value. This is no longer an item object. We're now actually returning the dictionary. That's kind of why I pulled it out in here because we don't necessarily want to, I mean, you know, we could declare it, uh, but it's not worth 
the hassle right now. So we have this information here and let's go ahead and hit execute. And there we go. We get price, tax, price with tax as our example. Now, here's one other thing. Let's add in an int. Let's set the price as an integer instead of a float. I don't know why. I mean, price should have, uh, it should have two decimals, but let's just do it anyway. So now we go ahead and do this. We hit execute. You can see here, it takes this in as an integer, but it's a compatible type, so it will convert it um, to a float when you're actually adding them together. Let's just see if it takes the string. I don't think this will work, but I haven't actually tried this. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, we got the error because it doesn't, it doesn't inherently convert from a string to a float, that makes sense. Okay, so we have this method now. Let's try again, it refreshed, good. So the only other thing really is um, to um, add in just a, a little bit extra. Um, we can actually items, we're gonna do a put request, item ID, and we will say async def create item with put item ID is an integer and item is an item. So what will happen here again, like we've seen before, item ID is an actual path parameter. So this will recognize it as a path parameter here. We're declaring it as an integer. This will be recognized as a body attribute again, because we've declared it using this base model. We will touch on query parameters in just a minute. So here we're just going to return item ID, item ID, and let's just return the spread dictionary object for that. We go here and refresh the page. Uh, let's do this put request here. This is going to be hello, and it shouldn't work. There we go, I'm clicking execute, and it's already telling me it's not allowed because we've said here that it has to be an integer. So five, six, seven, we hit execute and we get this valid response. We get the item ID is five, six, seven and this body information right here. Okay, let's add in one other little tidbit. We're going to add in a query string, string or none equals none. And let's just say that result equals this. And then if Q result dot update Q and we'll just say it's equal to Q and then let's just return the result fairly simple again we're declaring this as a path parameter up here this is this item is declared using Pydantic so it knows that this is a body parameter it's request body not a parameter this since it's a primitive type and I don't know if they're called primitive types in Python. Um, in fast API, it refers to it as a singular type. Um, this is, you know, in JavaScript, it's kind of like string float or a string a numeric type, Boolean, things like that are primitive types. Objects and arrays are um, not primitive types. Um, so if it's a type like this, string, float, integer, Boolean, something like that, it will be treated as a query parameter if it is not declared up here, like we've already seen before. We go ahead and refresh the page. Now we try this out. We'd say 555, we hit execute, and we get this. And we notice that the query was not added because we didn't include it because it's an optional parameter. You can see here the string or none equals none. Um, if we were to type in hello world and we hit execute, it would now return the query is hello world. And that's it. It's fairly, you know, fairly simple. We now have the ability to add in path parameters. We now have the ability to add in query strings, and we now have the ability to add in a request body. So we've got the three main components of a request that we're going to be sending. Uh, the next couple of videos, we're going to actually be talking about validation because aside from just saying, Hey, this needs to be an integer or Hey, this needs to be a string we can actually say, hey, this integer has to be, this is just an example, this integer has to be greater than zero. It's an ID field, so you would assume that it has to be greater than zero. 
um, you know, things like that. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about um, passing in uh, string validation for query parameters. We're going to talk about uh, numeric validation for path parameters. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll go on from there. Uh, so I will see you next time.